Today's activity, we're going to look at the back titration experiment. Before we actually get into the chemistry, though, every time I've taught this particular experiment, um, students, a lot of students have had a hard time visualizing exactly what's going on. So I thought we'd start off with a slide to help you visualize what we're doing here. So imagine that we're in Swansea, which we are, and it's very rainy, and there's a big pile of umbrellas outside the classroom that I'm teaching in that will, of course, be very popular for students when they live. Now, I could go ahead and count those umbrellas, but they're sort of all tangled together and it's a big pain. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just invite my 20 students into the classroom. And I'm going to go tell them to each get an umbrella. And of course now students never leap forward to do something to start with, but eventually the first one goes and grabs an umbrella. And then a second one grabs one. And then a few more, and then a few more. And then there's just a few umbrellas left, so very quickly those last group grab them. And what we see is that I've got six people left. Now what that tells me is that because I started with 20 people and six people are left after everybody else has grabbed an umbrella, that there were 14 umbrellas in that original pile. That's the concept of back titration. So let's get back to the lab we're going to do today. And we're going to be examining the efficiency of a couple of antacids. Now, I'm not going to particularly tell you which antacids one is. You know, there's no product placement going on here. But just to give you an example of an antacid, here's one of the most popular ones, Rennie. So if you're like me and you've gone a little bit through life not eating properly and taking care of yourself, your tummy's a little bit delicate. And so if I go out and I eat a particularly nasty curry or if I get a particularly bad shock when I look at my students marks on an exam, then my stomach floods with acid and it's horrible. I get indigestion, I get reflux and so on. So what I do is I munch an antacid. Now, of course, to a chemist, if it's an antacid or an antiacid, it's got to be a base. Okay, so essentially what's going on whenever one chews a Rennie or something similar is you're doing an acid-base neutralization reaction. You've got the acid in your stomach, you're adding the base in the form of your antacid to help you neutralize all that nasty extra acid that's there. Now, of course, here's a big pile of uh, some of these antacids and both of those pictures taken from the Rennie.co.uk site. Now, if I look at that picture, it's not just base in those tablets, it's base plus a bunch of filler. And of course that filler is there to maybe make it taste a little bit better because you see you've got orange, you've got spearmint, you've got uh, peppermint, you've got sugar free and so on, a little bit of binder and everything in there. So there's a whole bunch of extra junk in those tablets. And let's abbreviate this as B for base and F for the junk for the filler. And what we want to know is between two antacids, which antacid has got the more base compared to the filler. Well, I said it's a neutralization reaction, right? You take your acid in your stomach and you add the base in the form of the antacid. Or if we've got our base in the form of the antacid, can't we just titrate it with acid to do a neutralization reaction? And of course, every bit of acid that we put in will neutralize a bit of base. If we put in enough acid, all we'll have left associated with the tablet is filler. And what we would say is that at the end point of our titration of this with the acid, in other words, when we've added exactly the right amount of acid to get rid of all of that base, then we can say the moles of the acid that we added is equal to the equivalent moles of the base. And I'm going to say right now this little teaser associated with this, but this is pretty much the fundamental. At the end point, you've added enough acid to take care to neutralize all of the base. However, this little issue here, because most antacids, the base is carbonate, usually calcium carbonate floating around in there somewhere. OK, and as you start to titrate carbonate with acid, you make bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate, which is a really effective buffer solution. And in one of the post lab questions, I ask you a little bit more about this buffer solution for you to go and look up what is it that makes hydrogen carbonate such a yucky buffer. Now, trouble with the buffer solution is as you're adding acid to a buffer solution, you don't quite get the effects that you want. Buffer solution are resistant to pH change upon added acid 
or base. So what you have to do here for our antacid determination is we have to be a bit sneaky. We have to do a back titration. So imagine that all our bases in there are umbrellas. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add tons of acid, bring in lots of students, way more students that we need, right? Add in tons of acid and that acid will take care of all the base. In other words, each bit of acid that goes in that gets a bit of base, each student that goes in that gets an umbrella and the base disappears and the acid is used up and we're left behind with the poor students who didn't get an umbrella. We're left behind with unreacted acid. Now this is acid, there's no buffer issues there at all. So now we can take this new situation and now we can titrate it with a different base, which is going to be a strong base of sodium hydroxide. So again, we don't run into buffer situation. And so we get to the base free situation, not by just going straight there, but by adding in a massive amount of acid to take care of the base, leave some acid behind and then count how much acid was left behind. So when we do this titration with the base, at the end point of this titration, the moles of the base that we had to add equal the leftover moles of the acid. And seeing as how we know how much acid we started with in the same way we knew we started with 20 students and we can determine by this titration, the number of students left, the number of moles of acid left. Well, then we can say that the moles of B in the original antacid the number of umbrellas at the start is the original number of students minus the number of students left over, the original moles of the acid that we knew minus the number of moles of the acid left over that we determined by the titration. Hopefully that makes the experiment a little bit clearer.